I've been uh, designated a threat to national security and as such I'm not allowed into the country. This was when I was 18 and I first came to Russia. I thought if I say something wrong, I'm going to be labelled as a spy. I've reported throughout Vladimir Putin's presidency on the gradual crushing of rights and freedoms. Do you feel safe now, comfortable now, like speaking openly? No, never, never. I don't feel safe here in this country. It is very bad and it could become much worse anytime. This is the story of my expulsion from Russia and what it says about the country I've been forced to leave. The border guards had me sign this to say I'd been warned of the ban. For the end date, they scrawled indefinite. Apparently, for whatever reason, um, that's it. My whole story with Russia is over. And yet, after 12 hours, I was suddenly released and let into Moscow. They let me in, for now. But only to pack. None of that has been explained to me yet. But a reliable source did tell me I'm on a sanctions list for anti-Russian activity. I knew that the FSB had me on their records as a threat. I sort of thought that if I said something wrong or revealed too much or protested too loudly, then suddenly, like, I'm going to be labelled publicly a national security threat. I'm going to be labelled as a spy. Russia seems a confident, carefree place on the surface. But underneath are the stories of people like Anastasia. The single mum just spent two years under house arrest, accused of links to a pro-democracy group based in Britain. I followed her case from the very start, when Anastasia was prosecuted as a security threat. They blame me being um, not a patriot, but being an agent of other country. Do you feel safe now, comfortable now, like speaking openly? No, never, never. I don't feel safe here in this country. I am afraid. I am afraid for my children, for my mom. I don't want to go to jail, of course. I am afraid of uh, police sometimes. You, you, you feel uh, pessimistic, yeah? I personally, right now, I feel pessimistic. Russia seems like it's closing off from the outside world and, and people like you are the victims of that, I guess. Yeah, it was a time when political uh, activists were under oppression, but now everyone actually is under oppression. Officially, I was ordered out because a Russian reporter wasn't allowed to stay in London. But that was two years ago, and no one made a fuss until now. HIV, corruption, there's the protests, Belarus, Uzbekistan, football, I like a bit of football. The World Cup, that was amazing. People were really friendly. I got Someone ran up to me in the street on the square and she kissed me <laughs> for coming to Saransk file on treason and spies. I don't even remember which one this was. So many of them. Half of the people that we reported on are still in prison. <laughs> Nemtsov is dead. I suppose I could just chuck it all away, but it just feels like an archive of a country, of a time, of a period of time, which hopefully won't be this miserable forever. <laughs> Mash can just stand here, guard my place. Нет, нет, там все,
Independent Russian journalism is also under attack, like never before. The team at Dorscht covers stories that state-controlled media won't touch. They've already been forced off TV and onto the internet. Now the channel has been added to a blacklist of media declared as foreign agents. The journalists have to mark all their work with a warning. This news is from a source that's hostile to Russia. The status of foreign agents means that we, Dorscht, we are enemies of the, of the state. Uh, that's exactly what they wanted to, to do with us, to say it's not safe to watch them, it's not safe to talk to them, it's not safe to work with them. Dorscht is still on air, though, with that mandatory warning. In the headlines when we were there, an activist under house arrest for tweeting about a protest for Alexei Navalny. President Putin's biggest critic is in prison. His entire organization has been banned as extremist. It's uh, really strange now in news bulletins like this because the presenter, every time she refers to Alexei Navalny or to his anti-corruption foundation, she has to remind viewers that they've been labeled extremists and foreign agents, the same as this TV channel. And the list of people that journalists now have to use that disclaimer for is growing all the time. There is the understanding in the Kremlin that the, the pretending of uh, being democracy is over. It is very bad and it could become much worse anytime. The Kremlin was my view for a long time. But its view of journalists, of the West and of internal Russian critics has really darkened. This is my favorite. This is when I was 18 and I first came to Russia as a pre-student. I was learning Russian then. The country was opening up to the world. It was a time of new hopes, but real hardship too. That's the uh, Russian military base in Chechnya in the early 2000s during the Second War. So our basic mission was to get away from our minders so we could actually talk to people without them listening. I began reporting from Russia just after Vladimir Putin came to power. I didn't come to Russia to tell bad stories about Russia. I didn't come here to undermine the Russian state, which is this kind of mentality that they appear to have. I came here to talk to Russian people and Russian officials and to try to understand this country and to explain it to other people. Vladimir Putin's presenting this as just another working visit, but of course it's so much more than that. You know who defends human rights here, he told me. <laughs> there have been dozens of people detained here on Tverskaya Street. I felt like by singling me out specifically, I felt like they were saying they didn't like what I was reporting, they didn't like the job I was doing, and it was easier for them just to get rid of me. Russia's getting rid of political rivals, too. Alexei Navalny's team don't want me to reveal where we met for safety reasons, just that it's in Europe. Navalny himself was first poisoned, then imprisoned. Now all his closest allies are abroad. We found them preparing for a live stream as usual, but far from the surveillance, the police searches, and the criminal charges they face in Russia. Navalny's team have been outlawed as dangerous extremists, slurred as agents of the West. Their real crime? Digging dirt on Russia's political elite, exposing corruption. They are still working, but the pushback is fierce. Эта, эта машина, она никуда не денется. Она не умеет разворачиваться. Она умеет только работать по нарастающей, работать с запретами. Такие чувства они на безнадежности или там вообще то, что это все бесполезно, не приходят. Вот особенно сейчас, да, вот когда вообще люди либо сидят там, либо здесь уже в ссылке, в общем. Красная линия уже давно пройдена, но это не повод как-то совершенно отчаиваться и прекращать свою деятельность. Мы все равно хотим вернуться в Россию, связываем свою жизнь с этой страной.
my own link to Russia has been broken. But Vladimir Putin is going nowhere. He's just got the constitution changed so he can stay on in the Kremlin. I mean, I don't want to go, but I'll go. I mean, initially it was devastating, now it just makes me angry. <laughs> because it's not my choice. And also because it's just wrong for journalism. I do worry about what's happening to the country I'm leaving behind and to the journalists and to the just people that I've met who, who, um, who I think would like to live differently. Ready? So I've been forced from a country I've called home for almost a third of my life. Whose story I've tried to explain to the world. But as Russia increasingly sees enemies all around, it's now added me to the list.